بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله the salaf used to say يعرف لا يعرف لا يعرف الحق بالرجال ولكن يعرف الرجال بالحق and by Allah if we practice that principle from our salaf al-salih ridwan Allahi alayhim we would have so much success and so much of this fitna would be squashed that we have between the youth but in fact we find that the youth continue to ask the same questions what's your position oh what do you say about this about so and so the mashayikh have said this about so and so so I'm gonna give you an example recently someone asked me about my position on a particular sheikh and someone else countered by putting a post the mashayikh of Ahlul Sunnah say this about sheikh so and so so it's a compilation and I didn't open it this video has obviously been translated by other brothers who are du'at and a compilation of some of the ulama because I've already heard it I've already read which is even better and this is a benefit of gaining the Arabic language learn Arabic so you can then you can have an intelligent discussion and a better tasawwur a better understanding of these issues once you know the language because the language is just a tool to get you into the conversation if you don't you're totally dependent upon what people have translated for you and their perspective and editorials and criticisms about what is being said so in this particular situation and this is a qaida a fiqh this is a fiqh principle that when you make a ruling or a judgment on something a part of that ruling is having an accurate description that that is a part of making that hukum meaning you can't make an accurate judgment or ruling about something about an individual whether it be Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali, whether it be Sheikh so and so, whether it be Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi, whether it be Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Madkhali, whether it be Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, whether it be Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, whether it be Sheikh Alama uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin al Abad, whether it be Sheikh Alama Wasiyallah Abbas, whoever, Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan, Imam, Sheikh uh, bin Uthaymeen, whoever, you cannot make a proper judgment if you don't have a correct understanding of the issue so if one of our ulama is being criticized by another one of our ulama the person who has some knowledge at least enough to be able to distinguish the haq then they should distinguish the haq they cannot just blind follow and say well sheikh so and so said this khalas that's enough, I'm gonna make tibdi of someone else who's known for Ahl Sunnah, who's been known to be from Ahl Sunnah for, for years and years and years. And all of a sudden you're just gonna take a statement of a Sheikh, well-known Sheikh of Ahl Sunnah, and you're gonna go with that. But rather, you must, especially if you're Talib al-Ilm, look into those issues to distinguish the haq. To distinguish the haq. So in this particular I issue, Habatifillah, the brother said, look at this compilation of Mashaykh that have refuted this shaykh. Likewise, I could, we could easily compile a list of ulama that have praised and said that, that those criticisms were based on either desires or they were incorrect and this shaykh is still one of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. We can easily compile just is, uh, uh, th that list and a greater list. So what does that leave us? For one, it leaves us to stay out of those issues. That's where we should be first and foremost, as students, as small students, and as those who are even less than them. Stay out of those issues. Number two, if you don't have the Arabic language and you cannot even look at the delil of those different ulama for why they are saying what they are saying, then you should also keep silent. You should learn Arabic. Number three, you should also look to another very important aspect 
aside from keeping silent, is that if you have the ability to, then look, look into the issue. And look what's being said. In the particular issue at hand about this particular scholar, Wililan Hamd, I've had the chance to look at what has been said about him and what he has said and how he responded. And I made my judgment based upon that. That this sheikh is a sheikh from Ahl Sunnah, as many of our senior scholars have verified, and that the criticisms of him, some were criticisms that were uh, perhaps beneficial criticisms, and some were definite attacks that were unwarranted. And that's why we have to be able to distinguish. You have to be distinguished if someone makes a refute, refute someone. Ahl Sunnah has always refuted Ahl Sunnah. This is not anything new. But it's when you then take the step to say he's no longer from the Sunnah. That is something you have to be careful of. So ulama can rud, refute each other and still have respect for each other. How many ulama from Ahl Sunnah have refuted Imam al-Albani? And Imam al-Albani came with punching gloves because of his weight in ilm and hadith and punch back at them. So where does that leave you? Do you make tabdi of Imam al-Albani? Do you take make tabdi of Bin Baz? Do you make tabdi of, of all these other giants in ilm wa fiqh wa hadith? Imam Muqbil? Rahimahumullah jami'an? Do you belittle them because they refuted each other, sometimes harshly, but they still had respect. We do not have respect. We don't know how to differ. And we've got to learn this. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with good, bless us with ilm of fiqh, because that will teach us. But it shows we have little ilm and little fiqh when we're always harsh with one another, when we're always attacking the honor of one another, when we're always trying to belittle one another, when we're always making the people follow one view in opposition to the other view without any knowledge to do so and without guiding the people to that which is right and correct and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil protect us from blind following protect us from ta'asib protect us from hizbiyah protect us from dhunub wa ma'asi wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam